The question that you might ask is, if ML only applies before engine start, can we still refer to it while we are taxing the aircraft? Say, for example, the fault appears once you are reaching the holding point of the runway. Should you refer to the ML? ML, or Minimum Equipment List, is a book created by Airbus to help us decide whether we should take the aircraft for a spin. There are many moving parts and components in an A320 plane. So if one item is defective, we need a book to help us decide if the plane is safe to be flown. So now you've got a master book, the MMEL, the mother of all MELs. This MMEL is a super thick book that lists down all the equipment that have to be working and also guidelines on how to handle them. From this MMEL, airlines will take bits and pieces from it to produce their own version of MEL. Each airline has different specifications for their fleet. Some equipment are optional and it is up to the airline to install them. So between the MMEL and MEL, which is more restrictive? The MMEL, of course. So you have three criteria in this book. Go, meaning you can dispatch an aircraft, but there is a time limit. Go if, meaning you can dispatch an aircraft, but you have certain restrictions or need to perform certain procedures. These failures also have a time limit. An example is if your wife allows you to go out with your buddies, but you need to clean the house and do the laundry before going out. And also you have to be back before midnight. No go is self-explanatory. You are not allowed to operate the aircraft if certain important equipment is faulty. Question, what if there is a system that fails, but is not listed in the ML? Is it a go or no go item? Example, you found that your main gears has no tires. Are you allowed to go? Answer is, of course not. So, any item that is not listed in the book, these equipments are mandatory items and have to be functional before dispatch. Okay, now let us classify failures. For this, you need a computer called the CFDS, fancy name, Centralized Fault Display System. All the sensors will spew out information and will be sent to this main computer and the pilots will know this through eCam alert. From here, the computer will decide to classify the faults. There are three classes. Class 1 fault have operational safety concerns. This is your eCam alerts, your master warning, master caution, loss of indications, etc. It could also be messages on the forward attendant panel of the FAP. So in essence, all class 1 faults are inside the ML book. Let us move on to class 2 faults. These are your maintenance messages displayed on the eCam when your plane is on the ground. Once the flight is done, you will get a CFDS printout if there is a printer installed in your plane. Normally, the repairs have to be made within a certain time period. Okay, class 3 faults, the lowest class. This type of faults will not be recorded on the post-flight report printout. They are not in the ML and ARCO items. Engineering teams will be the ones who will be aware of these class 3 faults when they perform a bite test and print out the results. During a walk around inspection, if you notice any damage to the aircraft, it must be entered in the technical log. These items like dents and scratches cannot be detected by the computer, the CFDS. I will talk about the MCDL book in another video. So the question is, when can you use the ML? The ML is applicable when the aircraft is on the ground with engine shut down. From the fault messages, the pilots can refer to the ML to see if they can dispatch an aircraft or not. They may also need to perform some operational steps before flying. So let us talk about repair intervals. Some equipment may be inoperative but there is also a time limit to fix them. Repair intervals are divided into four A, B, C and D. If your repair interval is A, it means that pilots have to refer to dispatch conditions. B is 3 days repair interval, C is 10 days interval, and D is 120 days interval. The AML will also inform you the number of items installed and the number required for dispatch. If a play card is needed, then engineers will have to put it up for the pilots to be aware of the faults. If the fault is a go if, there will be an O alphabet in brackets. This will be a list of procedures that the pilots must do and O means operational. If there is a maintenance requirement, then the letter M in brackets will be next to the list of items. And this will be listed in the AMM, the maintenance manual which the engineers will refer to. The pilots will leave it to the engineers to do the maintenance procedures. Once the pilot walk into the aircraft, 
one of the first few things he needs to do before ordering coffee is to check the aircraft technical log and see the deferred defects section. If there is a failure item that has not been resolved, normally the engineers will defer it. It is possible that while waiting for the spare parts, the engineers will put the problem aside first with the help of the MEL of course. The pilots need to make sure that the repair interval is not expired. The question that you might ask is, if MEL only applies before engine start, can we still refer to it while we are taxing the aircraft? Say for example, the fault appears once you are reaching the holding point of the runway. Should you refer to the MEL? But as a pilot with good airmanship, you need to take into account that you might not have operational support once you land at your destination. Also, there might not be engineers at your destination to rectify the problem when you land. Once you land, your aircraft might be declared grounded or AOG. Therefore, it is prudent to check the MEL before departing even if your aircraft has already started moving on its own power.